and welcome to the first ever series of off of the wheel of fun and the wheel of fun directed us to a retro game this is a retro game that was made for the super nintendo back in 1994 as you can see there on the title it is called illusion of gaia this is one of my most favorite rpgs ever designed ever not just for SNES, but ever. Okay, this game just rules. And if you've never played this game, it's okay. You're going to play it now. You're going to play along with me. It is just a fantastic RPG. And uh, the first thing that I'd like to do is uh, tell you a little bit about the game. It's going to go through the story here. This game is actually based off of the world that we live on and a lot of the history in the world. Um, we start here with these boats traveling across. The world was in an age of exploration. This this game is probably set back in the 1200s, I'm thinking, is the setting. Looking for new lands, man uncovered the relics of ancient cultures. Uh, but yeah, I think the setting is, is around the, uh, the 12th century. Um, and you, you get more of that later on. Lag? No, it's just lag. Anyway, yeah. And we've got some Merge 7 going on. There's the Easter Island Merlith. As time passed, many legends began to surface. There's the Sphinx. A legend from each ruin. A legend from each culture. There's part of the Stonehenge. Various relics were found in the ruins. Is the Tower of Babel. One of the legends told of strange statues in the shapes of spirits. That's what this is all based off of. And there's a skull. What was a spirit to ancient people? The ruins don't tell us. Yeah, basically this whole thing is set around these, ru these relics they find in the different ruins of the world and uh, what they mean. There's, it's actually Anchor Wat, which is an area later in the game. People who entered the ruins searching for wealth went in and were never seen again. So you go to the places and you're never seen again. Why? Some said there were traps to protect the treasure. Others said it was a curse. And you see the dead guy with his traveling gear there. So obviously there's a problem with the uh, relics. No, no one thought these ruins would bring about disaster. So yeah, there's a... Uh, th th that's the, the opening to the game. You get an idea of what it's about. And so... Let us begin to play. Because I do. I love this game. Favorite RPG, man. Alright, here we go. Now we begin the game. Obviously I'm going to have to make a save file. And we'll, uh, they, they do it in the form of a diary, which is kind of neat. I also have the Super Eagle engine, so it looks a little nicer. So we'll start the journey. Uh, you can also change your button types. There's only two different types. I'm going to use A as attack and tug, B as an item, select as the uh, menu, and then Y, obviously not used. Um, I'm not even sure why they put a not used in there, but, you know, whatever. It's a three-button game. Simple to play. So let us begin. So you get more of the story here. We begin in school, of all places. And uh, that character to the left on the bottom row is the main character. His name is Will. She says, My name is Will. That's who's talking. A year has passed since I went to the Tower of Babel with my father. My father and his party met with disaster. Somehow I made it back to South Cape. That's where we are now. So you guys went on this expedition, and he doesn't remember how he got back, but he was the only one to get back. I still can't believe my father is gone. I'll never believe it. When I grow up, I'll be an explorer and see the world. Well, it's, not, it's going to take a little less time than that. Somewhere I will meet my father. That's good determination. There's the bell. School is over. The teacher says, that's all for today's lesson. You four do your best not to fall behind. Demons have appeared outside of town. If you go very far, you must go with your parents. So there's, there's your hook. Now there's dangerous things. Seth... I'll see you guys at the usual place. Seth is the one to the far right. Um, 
Eric is the one that was next to him. I have to go home first. I'll see you guys there later. If you don't hurry home, your mother will think that you were kept after school. <laughs> A little troll going on there. And then we have Lance. And Lance says, like always, the cave at the seashore. It's not very difficult to uh, find. And of course you're noticing that this game looks very much like it's something you'd find in RPG Maker. Uh, one thing that I like too is this game is actually set in uh, in a, like a side perspective. It's not really top down like most RPGs and as a matter of fact some of the levels are almost dead forward. So let's go up here because there's something interesting up here that you, you only get a few chances to get. Uh, behind the the bell tower here if you walk into here and you press the look button you find this red jewel now this is not a playthrough this is not a walkthrough but there are 50 of these things in the game and we need to find them all because there's a secret bonus level that you get for finding all the red jewels so just wanted to point that out too also this little energy ball over here that turns into an opening is the dark space this is where you actually meet Gaia and can save your game. I am Gaia, the source of all life. I will help you on your journey. Only one with the dark power can see this space. You are the chosen one. So now you realize that you have a special purpose in this world. You're not just going to be an explorer. You're destined for much more than that. In the dark space, you can record a travel journal. Stop there before you depart. Record what's happened so far. Record. Finish recording continue your journey then go and, and this this dark space has a lot of uh, main story element significance besides just the save point there are statues that will appear to the left and right that are uh, necessary for your continued uh, journey so we're in South Cape let's uh, let's head down to that uh, that seashore uh, thing yeah, you, anyone could could build this in RPG Maker. It's got very basic, you know, RPG Maker graphics, but for its time, it, it, this just unfolded to an incredible adventure. And I really like the music in this game. You can even see that the the characters actually function in the world as you play. Um, they're going about their business. I feel sorry for Seth. I understand why he hates to see his parents fighting every day. They give you insights as to what the characters are like. Here's this dude over here. He's fishing. When he, uh, as you go in and out of buildings, he changes his location. And if you find him over here, I'm pretty sure, uh, he gives you a red jewel. Or maybe it's down there, but one of those two places. So before we go into the shore, let's actually do that. So all you have to do is walk in. This is Lance's house. He lives here with his frail mother. I'm not going to, to talk to anyone. I just want to get the red jewel. Okay, he's still sitting over there. Let's try this again. There we go. Oh, that's right. It is over here. Because you can keep running in and out of the uh, the entrance here. So this is the seashore area. The seaside cave. It was unnat This is Will talking now. It was unnatural for the four friends to call the seaside cave their second home. It was natural, I'm sorry. Usually, when lessons were done at the school, they gathered there to talk and play games until sundown. So, yeah, if I go in and out of this doorway, um, it's random, so, you know, you never know when it's going to hit. But when you see the fisherman sitting on the edge of the dock, he, uh, you talk to him, and he gives you another red jewel. It's, uh... It's kind of annoying sometimes. And the one thing in these games is that they would, you know, make you do stuff like this. If you wanted the extra special stuff, you really had to work for it. And this game is no different. Come on, I know you're sitting there. I don't want to have to... <laughs> oh boy, a few more tries and then I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i have to try later. Because it's kind of necessary. I mean, I know I could hack the game, but that would be stupid. So, <clears throat> alright. Um, the heads-up display is simple. You've got the player on the left side. That's your life uh, points. 
Each one has two stages, the blue ball and then a smaller blue ball. If you get hit, some enemies only take half of one. So right now I have eight health. Uh, the hearts are continues. You can only have up to nine. And your DP, the other zero, is when you collect these, these uh, dark spheres, they add to the points. And when you get a hundred, you add a continue. That's important later. Then, of course, the enemy side. If you're battling an enemy, it will tell you how much health it has remaining. So it's a simple menu. Then, of course, we have our our uh, items menu here. The six uh, pillars are the six statues you have to collect. You have room for 16 items, which is more than enough. You can change the order. You can throw one away. And you have your stats here. See, there's my eight health, no DP, a strength of one, defense of zero, and no dark powers and no items. So, let's get the story moving. What is it, Will? It's late. I'm playing cards with Seth. Wait a minute. Seth, uh, I'm going to win again for sure. Suddenly, Eric rushed in with a desperate look on his face. What is it, Eric? News! Big news! The princess of Edward Castle has run away. Oh, now here we go. There's a princess in the game. So let's see what happens. They say she came to South Cape. The princess is here! <laughs> get so excited. Things are about to get real. That's all. Oh. <laughs> Lance is like, you're kidding, right? That's that's the big news? I don't give a crap. He came in such a hurry that I thought something really big happened. Yes, I don't care what you... Princess, who gives a crap? That spoiled little girl, Kara. The one you like so much, troll -lo 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 face. Liar! Maybe the soldiers will come looking for her. Which, what difference does that make? The soldier from Edward Castro looks so cool. I want to steal helmet too. Well, just make one out of iron, dude. I'm sorry, that's a Minecraft reference. <laughs> so Eric, Eric brings the news. Nobody gives a crap. So he calms down and sits down to play cards. Now here's where you find out why Will is the chosen one. Okay, as soon as you sit at the table, so everyone's here. What should we do? I want to see Will's mysterious power. Will's mysterious power is basically that he is psychic to an extent. He can move things without touching them. He moved the statue that's in the corner of the cave. Will, show me again. So now what you have to do is that statue over here, you've got to stand uh, any distance away from it and use your powers to move it with the L and R button. They're like, oh, it moved. And now that that's over, we go back to sitting. If only oh, I could do that. Next, pick a card, any card. Now, this is a cheap little RPG trick. He says, I'll put four cards face down. Pick the one you think is the Ace of Diamonds. Now, the funny thing about this uh, part of the game is that, obviously, it doesn't matter which one you choose. You automatically choose the Ace of Diamonds. And so I'll go over here, and then I want this one. We'll pick up a card. It's the Ace of Diamonds, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a neat little way of, of introducing that trick. But they're so amazed. They call it a psychic power. Yeah, it must be some kind of psychic power thing. If I didn't know better, I'd think it was magic, which apparently is, is different. Most people have five senses. Sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. I think Will's psychic power is some kind of sixth sense. <laughs> Regardless of that fact... Will has this power, and it comes in very handy. So they play some more games, and now you can leave. And when you leave, it has become nighttime. It was already dark by the time we left Will. Will left the cave, and I wonder if this dude is going to show up. Now that, now that it's nighttime, maybe. I don't know. Well, I'm not going to worry about it right now. We'll get it later. <laughs> Actually, okay, there he is. I still can't pull it up, man. He's just fishing all day. So now you you go back to your house, which is up here. This is my house. That pie that Grandma Mola, Lola is making smells really great. It's called snail pie. Oh, wait, there's a pig in the house. Minecraft reference. And it's wrecking up the place. Why is the pig here? So the pig is here. You don't know why. And this channel only allows me 15 minute videos, so uh, thank you guys for watching, and this is going to get very interesting.
the the first episode obviously is slow because I want to introduce everything and tell you what it's about if you've never played it. But it's about to get interesting. The story will unfold, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.